Thank you so much. Thank you, Haley. Uh, thank you for allowing us to hear the story and the update of your beautiful daughter and family. I, I just know that Haley always leaves with her heart. So thank you so much for having me here. Uh, we've been through it all for the last couple of years. Many of you are new to the one community and to Haley. I can guarantee you that you're here uh, for the right reason in the right place. I'm going to share screen. And as I do that, there's three things that I want to invite you to do. One is uh, please walk into this with uh, knowing nothing. I think a lot of times we come into a presentation and we're like, oh, I know this all. So you're missing the things that you don't. So if you walk in and just say simply, I don't know, um, and that's great because I know without a doubt, you'll walk away with one to two things that you will see and feel like it was worth it. Also, you will probably hear things that you have heard before. Have you ever felt like you're not yet ready for that message? So it wasn't really ready six months ago, two years ago, even five years ago. The second invitation is that I don't want you to feel like you have to do it all. I want you to just pick the things that you can do right now. And a lot of times uh, in my uh, speaking, both on stage, in person, in front of rooms of you know 500 to 1,000 people, you know I'm always worried. I want people to walk away with something. But I've got to remember that you only have one to two things that you can really do right, right now. So today we're going to start. There's a three-part presentation through the next three days of One Summit that I'm going to focus in on this overarching topic of how to work less and do more, the secret of growing your business. I'm going to focus specifically on traffic and funnels for everything that you want. I want to get a temperature check of the room. And my promise is, is that you're not going to walk away with the same old thing that you've heard. But more importantly, I want to say, I promise that you'll stop wasting your money and your time. You'll work smarter. I promise that when you're simple, you'll make more money and that you're going to get what you want because I'm going to help you focus on only what you want and not all the extras. So who is here and in the chat on Zoom, if you could put down number one, if you are here for more speaker opportunities, it helps me tailor my message through the next three days. If you're here for partnerships and collaborations, put number two. If you're here for sales, put three. And if you're here for marketing, put four. This will help me tailor my message today and my 20 plus years of experience to really help guide you guys with the roadmap. It's spent me, I've spent time and money on this. So hopefully you'll be able to pull it up and not have to do with uh, the pain and suffering uh, that many entrepreneurs go through and help you to solve your problems sooner. Okay, I love that. Thank you so much. I love that. All right. So as you kind of go through this process, one of the things I want to do is who am I serving today? Professional business owners, uh, professions that you're in a job transitioning into a business owner. If this is a side hustle for you, coaches, consultants, I want you to know that I'm trying to speak to you. Um, I hate when I come into a presentation and they're not trying to connect with me. And I'm just like, oh, you're missing the point. I want to connect with you because I want to hear what you're saying. I want to feel what you're believing. So who is in the room? That is really powerful for me. And I'm so thankful there's many of you who've made the time to be here on day one. And remember, I'm going to build on this presentation. So this is some of my family members, and this helps you understand why I became an entrepreneur over 25 years ago. Um, I was told by individuals and professionals who were far more successful when I was that age, um, tell me that I couldn't do it because I should have been barefoot and pregnant I shouldn't worry about getting an education and I definitely shouldn't worry about, you know, trying to get more out of life. And so I, I said, well, that's great. I love that. That's the only motivation to get there. This picture on the far left, uh, my cursor's pointing at my parents at Walt Disney World. Last year, I was able to take my parents, my nephews, uh, my cousins, my, my own children to Disney World. And we did a week long vacation in Orlando. And that was a highlight of my entrepreneur career where I could take them and just let them know that our time together was to spend and make memories. And as an entrepreneur, you know, you have a lot of reasons why, but this is one of my reasons why is to make memories. Time is so precious. And so I want to buy as much time back with my life and my family and those I love. My children in the middle, they're adulting now. They're 23 and 22. I adopted them when they were six and seven years old. And they're one of my reasons why. They're one of the reasons why I became an entrepreneur because I I checked all the boxes and I still had a little life to live and give. And so as a single woman, I adopted these two amazing children and they're not the story they came from. My um, wonderful children's parents were incarcerated, 
drug users, teen pregnancy, had children with five different, 10 different people. And these were the only biological set of children that kept together. And so they're a big part of my why. They're a big part of who I am and why I'm here. And on this picture here, that's my dad. My parents are aging, unfortunately. And so my time here is to spend as much time as possible. We were in South Carolina. Uh, my brother is graduating from medical school. And my dad has been a big part of my life, especially as a woman who has pushed against a lot of no's and a lot of, you can't do that. And I love that because it just tells me I can't. And my dad has been a big part of who I am. I love being, you know, women in business, but more importantly, I love the fact that I've, I've had an upbringing of entrepreneurship. My parents ran a couple of businesses. I'm from Hawaii. Uh, we had a five bedroom home, three car garage. I didn't know the difference as a kid, but now as an adult, I realized that entrepreneurship uh, was the vehicle for us to really have what we enjoyed as children. Here's our company. These are some of our clients. Um, you know, I've had many, many, many professional experiences that have changed and shaped my life. Um, we love what we do. I have full-time staff. I have part-time staff. I have a total of 17 team members across the country and the world. And when you get to that point where you are supported by a team, I can now take on projects and responsibilities that I really, really want to do. And I know the pain of being a solo entrepreneur and doing one thing and only one thing. But more importantly, when you get a team behind you guys, that's when it becomes magical. So uh, enjoy the journey. If I can, if I can say any of that to you, it's, it's hard, but it's worth it. As I open up my presentation today, this is a quadrant that I just spoke at a university with uh, 40 women. And one of the main things that they said was this quadrant helped them realize the clarity and the focus. I know someone said that last night, clarity and focus was such an important part. And that's an important part of the journey of becoming an entrepreneur. And, and of course, uh, growing your business to the millions of dollars you want. Um, this quadrant I'm going to use, uh, you can definitely take a picture of it, take a screenshot, happy to use it, but I'm going to use it specifically as I'm building what traffic and funnels for your business means. In the center is you. This is your story. This is what you want. This is who you are. And in that quadrant, even though all the other things play together, you have to be clear on who you are. And let me tell you something. As an entrepreneur, over 25 years this year of experience, this changes. So who I am today is not the same person I was six months ago. Who I was last year isn't the same person I am today. And I want to invite you to say who this person is because that's how you want to build these traffic and funnels. You know, I have clients who say, Char, I love my business. And they used to hate it. And I said, why do you hate your business? They go, because I'm doing all of this work. I'm not getting the results I want. And so they, they forgot who they were. And so sometimes they're evolving and they don't allow them space to evolve. So quadrant one, whichever quadrant you want, I'm not trying to tell you which quadrant entrepreneurs, there's no lines here. You don't have to color in them. Quadrant one is what kind of lifestyle do you want? I work from a backpack. I literally am talking to you from another office about 30 minutes away from my main office in Salt Lake today. I'm usually on a plane. I'm never in one place more than three to five days because I love to travel, but I'm working from my backpack. And so quadrant one is what life, lifestyle do you want? Because the traffic and funnels you'll build for your business are going to be based on the business model you're building out of this quadrant. If you're wanting to just be one-to-one -one relationships and talk to people all day, then you're probably not going to travel a lot. You're probably going to be stationary in a, in a certain zip code in a certain area. Okay. Quadrant two, how much time do you want to give this? How many of you have ever heard someone say, I want free time, so I'm going to start a business. And they finally realized starting a business wasn't free time. So let's get real. In your current situation, how much time can you give right now? And maybe it's only five hours. Maybe it's only 10 hours. So start where you are. I work literally on my business with my team all week long. But I also have the freedom to change my schedule and make myself available when I need to. When you have control of time, that's really what I consider the best flex of an entrepreneur. Quadrant three. And I don't know which one you've driven, written in, so don't worry about it. But in quadrant three, what are you willing to sacrifice? Okay, because sometimes you're going to sacrifice time, Zumba. You're probably going to sacrifice family time. My children didn't know what I did when I was raising them. We had a nanny who would take care of like grocery shopping and cleaning and just the basics. But my children always told their friends, I don't know what she does, but she knows she owns a business. Because as an entrepreneur, you are probably doing a lot of different things. You're probably doing quite a number of 
I have to say this many hats. So what are you willing to give up? If you're willing to give up the next two years to build a business for the next five that will shoot off a monthly recurring revenue, then that's what you're willing to give up. And some of you might not be able to answer that right now. And that's okay. I'm just having you start where you are so that you can get where you want to go. The last quadrant is, what do you not know? And this is typical when you're building a business because your traffic and funnels, the way you're getting your lead generation, the way you're marketing, this has to be filled out, guys. You have to figure out what is that, right? What is that? Because it's going to make the decision-making fatigue go away once you know what clarity and things that you want. So as you look at this presentation, the next three days, I'm building on it. So I don't want you to worry or stress that you didn't get it all and it's not perfect. I just want you to figure out kind of some ideas, some thoughts. Let's start putting some ideas down. So what do you do right now for your marketing? Um, this is a used car sales experience. I, I use this as kind of a way for you to think of things a little differently. So who are you selling to? And if you tell me everyone, I'm going to tell you you're wrong. It's not everyone. And I'm going to use Tylenol as a great example. How many of us buy Tylenol, Aleve, Ibuprofen? You don't buy it every single day. You buy it when you have a headache, right? So the pain point of your customer and in your marketing has to market to the pain that they're experiencing. Uh, recently, I, I went on a trip and I, I couldn't find my allergy medicine. And I was like, oh, crap, I, I didn't pack it in my little bag. I, oh, no. I had to go to the CVS store across the street and it literally was $5 for the same bottle that I bought at home for $1.50. But guess what? I was willing to spend $5 because I needed it. And so that's how you want to create who you're talking to because like a used car salesperson, right? They're talking to their customer who needs to buy a car and they have a certain budget, a certain expectation and a certain need. So you want to think about that sales experience and say, okay, who am I talking to? What's their pain point? What do they need, okay? What do you want them to do? If you want them to buy it, great. If you want them to give you a review, great. But your marketing has to be so dialed in. So you can't say, Shar, everyone's my customer. That's not true. Because when you build out your traffic and your funnels, I'm trying to help you build it back forward from the goal and backwards. And what is the measure of success? Um, I don't know about you, but used car salesmen sometimes are not really great guys or girls and you never want to refer business to them. And so if you have a measure of success that people refer business to you, then that is going to be the measurement of success of your initial sale. And if that is something that you totally don't care about, like a used car salesperson who just is all about a transaction, guess what? You'll never get a referral. We have never spent a single dollar on advertising in all of my 25 years of business. We have spent zero because all of our business is referral, all of our business is relationships. And our clients uh, will spend between $467 per hour working with us all the way up to $180,000 a year. And so that is the measurement of our success is what does that look like? Who, who am I selling to? What do I really want out of them? So how this traffic and funnels work for your marketing, I just want you to imagine a funnel. Sometimes it could be a an upside down triangle, sometimes it's this, everyone has a different mindset. Funnel can be a straightaway start to finish, totally fine. But in this here, I want to be really clear. Your traffic and funnel needs to be what you want it to work. If your marketing is to be a speaker and you want to speak and get clients that way, then you have to build your funnel according to what that looks like, guys. Okay, because a lot of I'm going to get a lead. I'm going to get a, a, a person calling me up. Then your marketing needs to have that clearly stated in the funnel that you're building. If not, it's not going to work. And this is where Haley sometimes will say, man, clients, it doesn't work because your funnel isn't built correctly because they're not clear on how they want the customer to come through the process. Okay. So if you're not clear about the process, you have no business building a funnel because you're going to be frustrated. Your customer is going to be frustrated. They call it the clunky sales process because the marketing was clunky, okay? So in here, I want you to take this graphic and just say, what is the main point of my marketing funnel? What does that look like? What does that feel like? What does that tell my customer their customer journey is going to be? Now, I have some people who use social like Instagram. Uh, some of you are using Pinterest. Awesome, love it. YouTube, I love that. But a lot of times that's not for a customer engagement. That's just for visibility. So if you're going to have 
customer facing engagement, then you need to be really clear in your marketing or else your marketing won't work. Um, I'll tell you of a recent client we signed up. My marketing was literally a 15 second pitch and they signed up literally 30 minutes later for a $5,000 contract because I knew who I was selling to, I knew who my target was and I knew I wanted this certain outcome. But that's years of experience. It's not overnight. I'm just trying to give you the roadmap to help you save time and money and effort so that you can actually be able to pitch and have a customer come up to you and say, I need your service. I have a pain that I know you can help me solve. And that's all it was. I just knew the pain that they were under. And I wanna be really clear, if you don't know what that is, that's why you're here today, networking and doing the breakout sessions, because you're going to be able to kind of bounce off that idea to other people, right? That's kind of the invitation to it. Here's another pain point, and I want to talk about the marketing side really quick as, as I, I'm trying to watch my time and pour into you. Haley knows that I just get to the point and I love to pour into you, but sometimes I'm like, oh, I need more time. Marketing doesn't work if you don't work, okay? Some of you might say, well, sure, I don't have enough time. Well, then... Your business doesn't have enough time to make sales. It doesn't have enough time to grow. It doesn't have enough time to bring you customers. So if it doesn't happen, it's not because your business isn't doing it. It's because you're not working your marketing. And I just want to be really clear and really upfront that marketing is not something you can just go read a book. Marketing is testing. Marketing is failing. Marketing is learning what your customer is telling you because that's how you're going to get better at your marketing and your sales. If you don't do that step, it's really, really hard. Okay. So let's stop share for just a minute. Any questions in the chat? I really wanna provide value. So if you have a question that's coming up, please put it in the chat right now and I will um, go ahead and listen to what you're saying. Uh, part of the problem sometimes is people are saying to themselves, oh my gosh, I, I need help. So in the chat, if you are struggling with your marketing because you don't have time, if you're struggling with your marketing because you don't know what platform to go through, that was a really common problem last night. I want to help you understand what to do because part of the success that you're going to have with us is being able to understand immediately what to do and what not to do. Okay. So as you guys are doing that, that will be helpful for me to see and learn. I love that. I appreciate it. Um, so again, I love, I love that. Oh, thanks, Haley. All right. So as your guys are figuring this out, let me share screen again. And I'm going to go back to one of the critical steps in bridging the marketing between what you're doing and what you can do. There are tools out there that you can figure out, you know, how to save you time like Buffer or Ladder. Uh, sometimes you need a CRM to manage your sales deals, your sales flow, your email marketing. Use those tools, okay? This is the bridge between marketing and sales. If you're not currently using tools and you're doing it with Excel spreadsheets and emails and post-its, that's okay. But you don't want to live there all that time. You don't want to live there forever. You want to get to a place where there's automations and systems and processes because it's going to speed up the sales cycle, okay? One of the things that I really wanted to touch on is ChatGPT. I know that's a hot topic right now. We use ChatGPT for a majority of our clients who are in the tech space. And I'll have to tell you this, it literally saves the content team eight to 10 hours a week, which means that I can have more clients and more opportunity for them to work on. But we know how to use ChatGPT in order for them to get content to sound like them and feel like them, okay? These are some tools that are gonna help you in helping you with time and getting your marketing done. Processes and systems, guys, I cannot say this enough. This is what took us from a five-figure, six-figure, seven-figure company because our processes and systems were always improving and always changing. And we invited people to use our processes and systems to get what they wanted, okay? So as you're doing this, I just wanna make sure there's a rule. Do not buy the Mercedes of tools if you could get away using a Honda because a Honda will last longer, it will keep its value and it will be easier to maintain. I use it on one of my slides. I told Haley and her team and last night we kind of joked about it. Um, sometimes you guys get shiny object. You want to buy all the nice stuff. You don't need the nice stuff. Just do what works. And here's the rule. Buy what you're going to actually use. If Excel spreadsheets going to how you're going to do your sales and stick to it. But remember, if you're trying to grow and scale with traffic and funnels, you're going to not get where you want to go because it's going to pull you from archaic marketing and sales into an automation. And you want to move from archaic to automation as soon as you're charging higher ticket value products and services. Okay. So again, 
if you guys know anything about me, one of the biggest things that I, I feel is really strong in, in our sales and marketing strategies is remember, you have to start where you are. Don't try to get stressed and overwhelmed and say, gosh, I wish I was like George or Kevin or Mary or, you know, Suzanne. That's not your journey. You just need to be happy where you are. And you you being here at Wayne Summit is going to help you get there because it's going to help you streamline some of the processes and systems and make some key decisions on what you really need help with. Now, that being said, um, you know, there's, there's a couple of things I want to say on the sales side. So now we're going to get into the sales. When we decided, you know, marketing uh, was going to be our, our vehicle for opportunity and what we were going to do, it's always been sales leading marketing. Okay. I'm going to talk about your customer. How you buy is how you sell. So if you are a customer who loves to look at reviews, if you're a customer who likes to ask their friends what they're using, guess what? You're going to sell that way. If you are a buyer that doesn't care and you know what you want and you go after it, that's the kind of customer you, you're going to be attracting. You have to remember, you might be doing some things that are not necessarily probably the same as others, but sometimes we start off with how we buy is how we sell. So get yourself in check and see, do I buy and sell this way? Maybe those are the adjustments. Maybe that's why the funnel isn't full. Maybe you don't have a bunch of leads or a line out the door waiting to start with your services because how you buy sometimes is how you sell. Your Amazon customer. How many of you are drop ship? I need it right now. And in two hours, Amazon is at your door. We all are that way. Let's not lie to ourselves. Your customer now is this way. So when you're selling, I want to make sure it's super clear. Your customer is going to have a different buying journey than maybe another type of product or service. For example, the other day, we took my car in for warranty work, right? And they sent us an email and said, hey, warranty work's needed. Uh, bring in your vehicle. Oh, okay, no problem. I can drop off my car, talk to the salesman. He gave me a loaner for the next couple of days, took really good care of me. We buy cars from them. They're just excellent customer service. We get that kind of service because that's the kind of customer we are. We want that kind of service. And so imagine who your customer is. If they want instant results, then you need to be clear that that's what you do or don't do. If they need you to pay attention to them and listen to them 100% of the time, then you need to be that kind of service provider. If you're selling a product, have a money back guarantee because guess what? That's what Amazon is selling them. Last is, and I love this, one of our clients, they ran an ad, they had 132,000 impressions. And they're like, Char, look how many impressions. I'm like, awesome. So where's the leads? They're like, what? I'm like, there's no leads. If you don't have a call to action, if you don't have a way for the customer to understand what they need to do with you after they get information from you, all those impressions don't make you any money. They're visibility. It's a visibility strategy, but not a lead generating strategy. Okay. I hope that helps someone in the room get an aha moment because our client then came back to us and said, okay, Char, how do we do this? How do we fix it? And we said, here's what you need to do. And we make some adjustments. And now they're going to run a new campaign. And they're going to put their $500 a day to something that's going to generate leads, not impressions. Okay. I know Haley probably is rolling her eyes and can say a lot of those clients probably come to her with that same problem. Because that's usually what happens when people realize I should stop doing that. <laughs> leads, not impressions. I know, Haley, you're totally going, gee, Char, I know. This is why Haley has me come here because I love to be blunt, direct, and to the point because we don't have enough time in the day to do the things that we need to. All right. As I'm wrapping up this section, I've got just a couple of minutes. I'm going to share a couple of more slides. And just again, once know that I'm going to be here for the next three days to share and give. And I love to connect with you on LinkedIn. You know, connect with me, send me a message. Here is what I consider the most aha moment that our clients get. The white t-shirt and your business. So the other day, um, I went to Walmart and there was a white t-shirt hanging and I realized it was only like 363. That same shirt on Athleta, that same shirt at Gap, the same shirt at Ann Taylor was now $27 up to $100. And I thought, man, is it marketing or is it selling? And it's not either of those. It's what is the product speaking to the customer? Walmart is convenient. They can pick it up, grab and go. They know they have it in case they need a, you know, if it gets dirty, they can throw it away. But an Ann Taylor customer, they know that this is a repeat customer. They're going to always come and do business with them. They're always going to come and shop for quality. So the value of that white t-shirt has changed because of the different stores that it's in, because they understand their customer. 
if you need a white t-shirt, you're probably going to say run to Walmart. They have everything. But if you're looking for a formal outfit, if you're looking for a business meeting to pitch and present a $100,000 idea, guess what? You're going to buy at a different store. So your business, depending on how you market and sell, is going to determine how they experience you. Um, as I'm wrapping up, is sometimes there's not a sale. Sometimes they'll come and visit you. Sometimes our best clients have come from us and they have never posted or never pressed like, never made a comment on any of our posting, okay? Because their type of engagement is they wanna have a conversation. They wanna talk to us. They wanna know if we can customize their marketing and sales strategies specifically to what their business needs. So you have to remember, just like the white t-shirt, depending on the store, depending on your business, what kind of customer you're attracting, okay? I have an invitation as we wrap up for a five-day LinkedIn for Leads challenge. I li have literally gotten speaking gigs, new clients, corporations, partnerships from LinkedIn and not having spent a single dollar. And if you know anything about LinkedIn, it is the most expensive ad spend ever on any platform. It goes between 50 to $125 for ads on LinkedIn. My dear friend runs LinkedIn ads and he says, Shar, they have to have at least 5,000 just to start on LinkedIn. And that's just the very beginning. And I just am always shocked about that because I've never had to spend a single dollar on ads. So this is an invitation to a challenge that we're having. It's a five-day LinkedIn for leads and that our promise to you is that you will get leads from our LinkedIn uh, challenge strategies that we'll coach and train you on. Um, connect with me on LinkedIn. I'd love to meet you, love to connect with you. And of course, love to meet you. Um, Haley has been great to allow me to speak the next couple of days. I want you to see in action what your business can do when you adjust some of your sales and marketing funnels. And with that, I want to say again, thank you so much for having me here. Thank you for letting me pour into you. These are many, many years of experience that I've poured into, you know, just a couple of minutes of sharing. And I look forward to meeting you guys and seeing you guys in the, over the next couple of days. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Haley, for allowing me to be here. Thank you so much, everybody. Let's give Charlene some jazz hands. Woo! That is amazing. Leads, not impressions. <laughs> yes, yeah, so yeah. true. And, and I'm going to add one more thing. It doesn't matter what your cost per click is if they're not converting. Yep. It's called just, you should give me the money. You should give your neighbor the money if you're willing to just give that all away, right? Just to go, I love giving money away. That's what you're really mm -hmm. doing when they're not converting into leads that actually qualify in order for you to help close them and serve them. Thanks again, Haley, so much. And, and look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. Thank you.